Hi, this is Doug with MyStar, and um, this video is for lesson four and is to help you connect the material from this lesson and from the previous lesson to the Unit 7.1 challenge where Jamie is figuring out how to make a video game console work in a remote off-the-grid location. In the previous lesson, students investigated magnets and magnetic fields that are in the space around the magnet. Uh, they looked at how magnets interact with three different materials, uh, cardboard, steel, and copper. Then, because they know that the generator only lit when we used magnets that were spinning, they checked how the spinning magnets interact with cardboard and steel, they discovered that the interaction between magnets and copper is somewhat puzzling because when the magnets aren't spinning there's there's no force at all and no interaction with the copper. But the spinning magnets apply a pretty obvious force to the copper. So in this lesson, lesson four, we need to investigate how forces can transfer motion and sometimes more than just motion between objects. In this lesson, students first figure out how a moving object can transfer its motion to another object through a force, like when one object collides with another. They do this by observing a pendulum system and then modeling what's happening in that system with force diagrams. Next, students figure out that forces can transfer more than just motion between objects. They observe that a steel bar, when whacked with a heavy hammer, will not only change the shape of the bar, but also heat the bar up enough to start a fire. So even though it's caused by forces, this is a very different kind of change from what we saw with the pendulum investigation, and it turns out to be an important clue to a new idea. To help understand all of this, we can use a new concept called energy. Energy is something that can flow through systems as it is transferred from one object to another. This is what's happening when one moving object collides with another one. The energy from this gets transferred to the car. Energy can also be transformed from one type to another. That's what we saw when the hammer hit the iron bar and those forces caused the temperature to go way up. So we saw the kinetic energy from the hammer turn into thermal energy in the iron bar. Thinking back to our generator system, students can use this new concept of energy to help figure out how the light can be produced kind of mysteriously when spinning magnets are placed near the copper coil. So kinetic energy seems to be changing to another form of energy. In the connect your ideas phase of lesson four, students connect all of this to the unit challenge. Remember that Jaime is figuring out how to use a generator like this one and the one in the rowing machine video to power a video game console. We can use the idea of energy along with forces to figure out more about what's going on in a generator system. To do this, students conduct another investigation with spinning magnets and a copper foil square. In the previous lesson, as we said, students observed the spinning magnets apply a non-contact force to the copper. This time, students will fix the copper in place so that it can't spin or move, and I've done this with scotch tape. Because they remember when they did this with the generator, the coil didn't move at all, and they didn't feel the force either, so we're trying to detect that force. So here, what they notice is that when they spin the magnets far away from the copper, nothing happens, but when they put it close, it dramatically slows down. So it's a little different than what they did yesterday, but they're really seeing this 
breaking effect of the magnet. And we've got another video that just does this whole demonstration for you and for your students. So what we're seeing here is we've got the significant kinetic energy in the magnets, but when we put it near the copper, that energy is being taken away from the spinning magnets. Another way students can observe that is to take the fidget spinner off the handle, put it back on its regular holders like this, but I'm going to put a quarter down, and the quarter is not magnetic. It doesn't, it isn't attracted to the magnets, but I'm going to put it in the middle, and the reason I'm going to do that is just because I want to hold the magnets up off the copper because it's kind of compressible. You may, or your students may think, well, let's repeat the test we did before, so I'll try it with the cardboard. And since there was no interaction with the cardboard when we tested it before, we wouldn't think there'd be any here, but now we've got the two squares, the quarter, everything kind of the same. And one more final try. Such a big difference. Wouldn't it be great if your students would wonder, where is that energy going? What they should be able to say is that forces are certainly there because forces are needed to make this slow down. And whatever forces here might also be present in our generator system when we hold the spinning magnets near it. After modeling their observations using these ideas of forces and energy, students return to the generator and the unit challenge as they consider what's happening with the fidget spinner generator system. Ideally, they will infer or hypothesize that energy is being transferred from the spinning magnets to the coil through some non-contact process and being turned into something which they probably would call electricity. We can now call it electrical energy. And that electrical energy is then being changed into this light, which is also a form of energy. These are some big ideas, and if students uncover them, they should really be congratulated. So the final part of the connect, students have seen that, that there's this force that slows this spinning magnet system down with the copper. They also see that it, it will light up this light, but they don't necessarily see a force. But you would surmise that there is one and maybe that's what's actually causing this energy transfer here. So we asked the students, well, how could we determine if, if there is a force here? And they might think about that and they might come up with an investigation. In our unit challenge, we say that Jaime actually conducts this investigation and collects data. And then that data is given to your students so they can analyze it. By analyzing the data that Jamie collects, students will see evidence that there is indeed a force between the spinning magnets and the coil. They can then relate this to both the fidget spinner system and the more complicated system of the rowing machine generator that's used in the unit challenge. So now we have the concept of energy. And we've seen it in the motion of objects, which we call kinetic energy and other forms such as electrical energy and thermal energy. The next logical thing is to investigate how objects carry different amounts of energy and how that can be transferred and transformed to be useful in our unit challenge. So that's the direction we'll take in lesson five. Thanks for watching this video and we hope it helps your students to uncover and connect these very difficult but important ideas.